Hi guys. So I had a question from one of my students, um, which I think is a really good question. And it's a point that's a common source of confusion. And it was regarding evolutionary psychology. When you're looking at psychological problems, one of the theories that we cover is social rank theory. And it's an evolutionary psychology theory. That's kind of the umbrella that it fits under. But it's never really explained very clearly, not even in the textbook, what that actually means. So I just wanted to make a quick video explaining how that actually um, applies and what that means. So you'll have all learned about, psych uh, about evolution um, in science. So evolution is the idea that a species changes and develops over huge periods of time to, um, to have characteristics which are best adapted to its environment. Evolutionary psychology is where a certain feature of psychology is explained because of evolution. So what I mean by that is that humans have developed traits through evolution which uh, better allows them to live and to succeed and to be able to reproduce. So you can you can explain a lot of the way people are in terms of evolution. So you can say, okay, well, the reason that people are able to cooperate is because through the process of evolution, um, humans who can cooperate with each other are going to have more opportunity to reproduce. They're going to be better able to survive and to cope with, with change and with illness and stuff like that. So you could say that our ability to cooperate with other people is evolutionary psychology because it makes sense when you view it through this kind of lens of evolution. We can see how that is useful. In modern society, depression is, is really not useful and it's something that we are trying to uh, reduce and remove and that we want to avoid. The reason it's an evolutionary psychology theory is because if you view it through the lens of evolution, you can kind of see how in certain circumstances depression could have been useful. It actually had a value to people at some point and that's where if you remember, um, for those of you who are in my class, obviously, I showed you the video of how those, um, I think we looked at baboons and how they survive in their troop. And what we found was that baboons who were not as strong, they were not as, uh, as physically capable, they would be kind of beaten or, or they would basically accept defeat rather than continuing to try and fight and challenge the strongest baboons. Now, the reason this is an ever, this links to social rank is social rank theory is all about where your standing is in society. And for humans at the moment, your standing in society is a very different thing to, to what it means to most animals. Um, so when you, so we need to kind of simplify things in order for social rank theory to make sense from an evolutionary perspective. And by going to monkeys, that, that kind of helps. So you're a baboon living in a troop of baboons and obviously you want to have the best food, you want to have the best mates and so you're naturally going to try and do your best. You know, you would like to be the leader, you want to be in charge. Now, you're, the only way to do that is there's going to be an element of conflict because you have to compete with the strongest baboon who does not want to give up uh, his position. And so there's going to be a bit of conflict there. Now, if that conflict turns into a physical fight, there's a lot of risk involved and the weaker baboon is going to be injured, uh, possibly even killed. And so it makes sense for there to be some kind of mechanism in our brains that stops us from actually getting so involved in conflict and continuing to fight even when we think there's a good chance we're not going to win. We need a bit of a safety cutoff. And that's kind of what the role of depression was through, uh, through this perspective of evolutionary psychology. Baboons who didn't have this reflex where they kind of accepted defeat and they, their body language changes and they become submissive and they kind of bow out. Baboons who didn't do that but carried on fighting would be injured and would be killed and then they wouldn't reproduce. And so baboons like that would die out. So through evolution, 
we can see that baboons who do have that trait, who actually do get depressed, if you like, by being defeated, by accepting defeat, by uh, changing what they want. You know, people who are depressed lose motivation and they lose interest in the things that they were interested in. And if you apply that in the baboon situation, baboon wants to be the top uh, monkey, wants to be the alpha, but recognizes actually that monkey is a lot bigger than I am, a lot stronger. And so a monkey who can accept that and who can change and, and lose interest in what they originally wanted, they are going to survive because they're not going to keep fighting. They're going to kind of uh, avoid the confrontation stay in the troop at a lower level, but they're still going to survive. They're still going to be able to mate, to reproduce. So baboons who do have that depression safety mechanism are more likely to pass on their genes. So you extend that over thousands, over millions of years, and you can see how um, the descendants, you know, the baboons who are living a long time later, it's only going to be the ones who have that ability to actually get depressed and accept defeat. They're gonna be the ones who survive. Now, when you look at human evolution and you and you follow that theory through, we are, we're, the, we're kind of the end result. And so it makes sense that humans would have this tendency to become depressed because we've needed it in order to survive and pass on our genes through evolution. Otherwise, we would have carried on fighting and we would have been killed. So just finally, to really link that back into social rank theory, which was the original question, social rank theory is the idea that how you fit into your social kind of setting in terms of uh, how successful you are compared to the people around you, that can determine whether you become depressed or not. So if you suffer a bit of a blow to your ego, if you uh, something happens that makes you feel like actually you are you're not as good as the people around you, maybe you fail at something. Social rank theory says that, well, depression is a natural response. It's a biological response because it's something that is part of you through those uh, years and years of evolution, that that is a natural way of responding to loss or defeat. So a common exam question about this, one that came up, um, I think it was a couple of years ago, maybe 2018, there was a question about a guy who was, uh, I think he was a football player. He tried out for a team and he wasn't successful. And then it basically went on and described the symptoms of how he stopped being interested in football, started spending more time in his room and, and withdrew. And what it wanted you to do was to be able to explain using social rank theory, uh, his response. So you needed to be able to, uh, to explain why that, why that happened. Social rank theory is a is an excellent uh, theory. It is it's very useful and there's a lot of evidence. So the early work that was done on baboons, actually we took blood samples, measured the hormones in their blood, and we could see that actually, yeah, baboons who were lower down did have different levels of these hormones. And um, one of my favorite kind of talks about this is a psychologist called Jordan Peterson. And he, uh, he uses the example of lobsters. And he says that, you know, this social rank idea is actually so ancient in terms of, of evolution that even lobsters have that the same part of their brain. So if you give lobsters antidepressants that were developed for use in humans, it actually perks them up. They increase in confidence and they're more likely to fight harder and, uh, and to kind of to not give up and accept defeat as easily. And so you can see that actually, yeah, it's, it's a pretty robust theory. It doesn't apply to every situation. Depression can be, can be triggered by, uh, by other events. And sometimes there's no clear link between a person's standing in society. Um, often people who we would consider to have a very high social rank, you know, celebrities, successful sports, um, sportsmen and women still get depressed and, and you, it kind of doesn't make sense as much looking at things through the social uh, the social rank lens. So that's one of the criticisms, but hopefully that makes sense. What evolutionary psychology is, how social rank theory fits into it. All right, see you again.